Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where we're going to be taking a look at a specific area of this leopard, which is the nose. I've covered the full leopard in a previous tutorial, which I will link in the description below, but we're going to focus on the nose for this one, so let's get into it. So one of the first things that I like to do when adding in a nose is defining all of the nostrils and the actual shape of the nose. So a cat nose like this is often like a mushroom kind of shape. So I just add in the kind of semicircle of the nostrils and the kind of triangle going down towards the mouth. And then you've got this kind of arch going across the top of the nose. So I like to add all of that in first. For adding in this, I'm actually using a walnut brown pencil, but if I've got a slightly dark nose, I tend to use a dark sepia or just some kind of dark brown, dark grey pencil to add this in. And to begin with, I'm just going in with a light hand. As you can see, I'm just kind of really gently outlining, making sure I get all of those shapes in right, making sure the nostrils are the same sort of size. And then I go in with a heavier hand and start to fill in some of the darker details. On my particular case here, I did actually go in and add all of the fur above the nose in this instance, and that's just so that I could accurately gauge all of the values and everything that are going to be added into the nose. This one is quite dark, it had quite a lot of shadow and a few little other areas, so I wanted to make sure that I got it right first time rather than coming ha having to come back and rework it a little bit. So I'm just adding in all of the fur above. The fur on this was like a fawny colour and it would have made a little bit of difference just leaving the paper white around the outside for this particular nose, so that's why I'm just adding in the fur first of all before going back and finishing off the nose. So as I mentioned, I like to go in once I've got that outline and add in all of the darker areas. So I'm using that same pencil, a walnut brown in my case, and I'm just going in and defining all of the areas around the nostril. So you've kind of got like this sidewards comma kind of shape that the nose makes, where it comes, we've got the dark nostrils and then it comes around the edges of the nose and up towards the kind of tear ducts of the eyes. Kind of got that, it's like a comma or like an apostrophe on its side, that kind of shape, that sort of kind of uh, thing that we're going for in the nostrils here. So I'm just filling that in with some walnut brown and then going over with some dark indigo because that makes a really unique, really interesting dark color adds a lot of depth to the dark areas so just go adding in those two colors and adding in those dark areas so then it's time to do the actual nose itself and for this one I'm actually going in with a light flesh a polychromos pencil first I'm just adding a couple of layers of that down and I'm using a circular motion so going round and round in small circles to add that texture down and I'm using those small circles so that it ends up looking quite smooth whereas if you shade back and forth when you're adding in a nose you kind of get more like a, a fur kind of texture you when you're shading fur you tend to go like in lines rather than circles whereas eyes noses anything that's kind of a little bit smoother I tend to go in circular motions just fills the tooth of the paper a little bit more and smooths it out a lot more after that, I'm then going in with some Venetian red and starting to add in the slightly darker areas, again using that same circular motion, and I'm leaving the areas where we've got a little bit of highlight free of any of that Venetian red colour. And then I'm going in and adding that central line down the middle of the nose, again with some walnut brown, adding in those dark features, so that really dark prominent area first, and then going back to adding in the colour and the darker areas in that Venetian red area that I just defined. So I'm actually using some Bista or some raw umber to add on top of that to create a more kind of orange tone. So rather than going in with straight oranges, which I find for noses tend to make them a little bit too vibrant, a little bit too bright, whereas adding in in like a red and then a bit more of a natural kind of dusky yellow over the top builds a much more natural looking yellow uh, orange and it doesn't end up looking too bright so even if you went in with a bit of burnt ochre sometimes that can be a little bit too bright so just building those two colors on top of one another works really really well and then to darken around the nostrils and kind of blend them in I'm using that walnut brown again I'm using that circular motion right next to the nostrils and coming into that Venetian red that raw umber mix of colour and using circular motions to add that in, sometimes coming in and kind of making like little radial lines coming around the nostril to blend that in so it looks like the nostril's kind of curving in or coming 
out from the darker area if that makes sense and I'm just using that walnut brown to come into the areas where I left blank or free of the Venetian red and just darkening them up right down the center at the top there of the nose you've got a really dark area so I'm just using some walnut brown and I'm going to add some dark indigo over that as well to build again that kind of natural looking dark tone you can go in and use something like a dark sepia but I find that when you build your own dark tone using some browns and some blues it makes it look a lot more interesting adds a little bit more depth and it also just gives you layering as well which is going to help to cover up a lot of the texture of the paper so building in a few extra colors there isn't gonna gonna hurt it's just going to help the nose kind of smooth out a lot as well and I'm using the walnut brown around the edges of the nose at the bottom in that triangle shape darkening up the very bottom and then as you come up towards the nose where it gets a little bit lighter just kind of lifting the pressure off the pencil down here I'm using a mixture of a circular motion and some lines because there is like a little bit of texture like a lined texture coming up from that that middle line that I've added in that dark middle line that you can see so I'm using a mixture of some small circular motions with the pencil and some lines and I'm also going in and using my Holbein soft white every now and then to add in a few highlights which may have been a little bit lost Using a really opaque white like the Holbein soft white is really really handy for a nose. If you don't have a nice opaque white you can use something like a white gel pen. Uh, you can even use a sliced ceramic blade or a craft blade to etch away some of the coloured pencil that you've added down. You can use something like a Posca chalk pen or something like that to add in your highlights if you need to. To help to darken up those really dark areas, once again, I'm going in with some dark indigo and I'm also using some dark sepia to really help solidify some of those darker areas, especially in the nostrils. You'll find that when you start to do noses and you've added in a dark nostrils and then you start to add in some of the dark areas on the actual nose itself, that your nostrils tend to look a little bit light. So you may need to go in with a bit of a heavier pressure with your brown or your blue pencils or start to go in with some dark sepia using a heavier pressure to get get really nice and dark in those nostrils maybe even going in with a little bit of black if you really need to push it further but you will find that as you start to add all of your mid-tones and your other values to the very center of the nose that your nostrils will start to get lighter so you need to make sure that you work on your darker areas and continually kind of darken them so that you get correct values going on within the section that you're working on so to help further the darker areas I'm just going in with again some more dark indigo I'm also adding some purple into the nose here which is going to help to complement the surrounding fur adding purple into noses as well kind of gives it a little bit more of um, a shiny effect just makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional especially if you're adding purple or blues into some of the highlight areas as well it just makes it look a little bit more moist a little bit more wet as I mentioned, I'm using a Holbein soft white pencil to add in some of the small highlighted details on the nose. Um, just going in and blending a little bit as well every now and then with the white pencil if necessary. And to add in a little bit of texture onto the nose, there wasn't too much on this particular reference photo, but generally noses tend to have like very small open ended circles as a texture. And I like to go in with some very small circles with a really sharp pencil and add some texture in into the highlighted areas and then blend it out into the darker areas so in your darker areas you're not going to have too much of that kind of nostril texture but in the lighter areas you're going to see that because the light is hitting it directly and you can see the shadows a little bit more prominently so in your lighter sections you want to add in a little bit of texture if you can see it just by adding some circles like make them a little bit kind of more sort of square sided circles even coming in with a little bit of like a square or something like that and just joining those shapes up making them really close together so that you can kind of get that circular pattern of the nose down to highlight some of those as well you're going to want to go in with your white pencil or whatever you're using for highlighting and just highlight one or two so that one or two of them are like catching the light a little bit. Once you've added in your main tones and you've got a little bit of texture in then you can start to glaze a few colours over the top just to give a little bit of extra depth so I like to use a little bit of Venetian red around the nostrils just where it might look a little bit darker and it's kind of like curving into the nostril so that lighter section from the outer edge is curving into the nostril and you can see I'm just kind of adding a little bit of that texture down as I explained here as well using a few jig 
zigzag zag kind of lines to add that texture in but yeah just glazing some colors over the top and just adjusting the values and that's pretty much it for this nose i just wanted to give you guys a quick few tips on how to achieve a nose like this one that is like darker not necessarily like a pink nose which i've done uh, previously so i've just used basically some light flesh venetian red and some walnut brown and some dark indigo to create this one. Really simple colours, really quick and simple technique and everything like that. But I really hope that you enjoyed this one and I'll see you guys in the next video and don't forget to look out for the leopard mouth tutorial. I'll see you later. Bye!